Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14 presented by Stakes here to do power rankings as we head to week five of the college football season. Blake, an interesting weekend in the Southeastern Conference. As always, let's start at the bottom. We've got four teams sort of grouped together in that bottom tier, although I would argue maybe a couple of sub-tiers. Anyway, for the second week in a row, Missouri occupies the 14th spot, Vandy to 13th. I think you could argue in reverse fashion, but either way, neither team very happy with how it performed over the weekend. Yeah, I think for different reasons, um, for sure, just based on quality of opponent and Missouri almost having a chance to win that game against Auburn. But I'll be honest with you, even if they win that game, I mean, they probably move up by default over Vandy, but I still don't think it's that much separation as we've talked about. And in all honesty, I don't, you know, these bottom four teams, I don't know how much separation there is between the bottom yeah. four at this point. Um, and I don't know, you know, a couple of fan bases probably won't love that, but it's just what we've seen. And, and yes, I mean, I still think, look, I mean, everybody knows who we're talking about in this group before Auburn and South Carolina are in there as well. You know, I still think Auburn and South Carolina are, are are better than Vanderbilt and Missouri, but you know, I think again, it's just it's so hard to know with given who everyone's played to this point. And I think again, mm-hmm. we we start to see more of that separation between these four in particular, probably starting this week. And you know, I think then, you know, then we have a better idea. I mean, I I keep saying it, like I still think Auburn's probably the best team of this group. But you know, as we said, that that Auburn Missouri game was rough to watch and. Um, you know, it's just a matter of seeing, I guess, how how things unfold for all four of these teams uh, from here. Yeah, and, and to prove your point, I mean, to find separation between Missouri and Auburn and in, in the game at Auburn, by the way, uh, the two teams needed to go to overtime. And if Missouri does not make just a series of mind-blowing plays, Missouri wins that game. But ifs and buts, if they were candy nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas, and that's the way it settles after this weekend, 12 is Auburn, 11 is South Carolina. I don't think a lot of debate on those in my mind. Blake, South Carolina got the beatdown of a bad Charlotte team that it needed. Of course, Carolina had played a pretty brutal schedule coming to that one. It was do a breather. It gets one next weekend. Uh, to me, I don't think there was a lot of debate on South Carolina at 11, but I feel like there's a, a gap between Carolina and the pack that's coming next. Yeah, I know. I agree. Um, I think, like you said, it's sometimes, you know, I always mention it's what you do against the teams that you you should beat um, that that can give you a little bit more of an impression of a team. And I think for South Carolina just to go out and, and completely handle their business against Charlotte, that's what you wanted to see if you're a South Carolina fan. And again, I, I don't know what that means in the grand scheme of the SEC, uh, but I still think that, you know, that they they did what they had to do and, and they didn't kind of, you know, waste time like they you know just kind of you know came out and said well let's take care of our business and yeah i know charlotte put up points early or whatever but but still i think that's what you want to see from south carolina and like we said with auburn it's just the issue just is to this point you know even with the schedule you know we talked about the san jose state game then what happened against penn state now you know you kind of somehow kind of fall into the victory against missouri a win's a win, but, um, you know, came out of that one not feeling like a, a victorious moment by any means uh, for Auburn, I think. Yeah, and in Carolina's favor, it is closed pretty strong in, in the two games it should have won, Georgia State and Charlotte. So, as it closed its season strong a year ago. And in, in the take care of business games, Carolina's come up two for two so far. Okay, three through ten. I think there's a lot of parity in here which I will illustrate after we are done talking with this uh, about this tier. Number 10, the Florida Gators, who certainly would have moved up a few spots had that last play in Knoxville gone a little differently, perhaps. Yeah, and I think, again, this is where Florida's going to be at 10, but you know, I, I'm not surprised looking around at all of our staff individual rankings here. I'm not surprised to see them there, but I do feel like you're still looking at this and saying, okay, if, if they're number 10 now, clearly showing Mm -hmm. some things against Tennessee, you know, that, that kind of tells you where the rest of the teams are in front of them. And I think that's, that's what you look at in this point. So, uh, you know, in a traditional one through 14, you know, a number 10 is kind of like one of your, you know, bottom type teams, you know, just based on numbers, but I don't really feel like Florida's that 
at this point now because we did see what we wanted to see from them against Tennessee. They lose the game, but there were a lot of positives, I think, to take away from that. Clearly, the, the play of Anthony Richardson right there at the top. But um, I think you feel much better about Florida moving forward than you did given what had, had happened those previous couple weeks there with them. So Yeah, the, the, the South Florida loss, I really worried about Florida. Uh, in, in a number of ways, but this was the, a, the a really nice South bounce Florida. back game. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it yes, it, right. it did they, feel like a loss as yeah, you watched gotcha. it. But gotcha. <laughs> sorry, Floridian slip there. Uh, number nine, Mississippi State. I, I think that State has got a chance to move up. Uh, as everybody knows, that's a team I sort of planted a flag on. But if you look at who beat who and the dynamics in front of State, you really can't rank State in a different spot. So. Sometimes that happens to teams this early in the year when there have not been a lot of games of the really good teams facing each other. That's where State ranks this week, but I would be surprised if State does not move up in future polls, Blake. Well, yeah, I mean, they'll have a chance to do that after this week. They play A&M, who, as you can tell by now, has moved up a bit in our, our composite rankings for the week. So, um, yeah, if, you know, if they come out and beat A&M, they'll undoubtedly move up and Again, it's still for me like it's the separation between those, you know, kind of teams like Mississippi State and, and Ole Miss and of course LSU who beat Mississippi State. And so for now, that's going to keep them ahead. Um, you know, I think in, in that scenario. So yeah, it's I still again they're, they're number nine, but they're you know not what you would probably consider from a talent standpoint a bottom half team. They are still a team that is perfectly capable of challenging, you know, teams whatever, you know, three through whoever, you know, whatever number you want to place on that. So I think that's what you kind of keep in mind here. And again, they will have a chance to move up uh, with a big game coming up against A&M. Okay. Rounding out the bottom half of our countdown, the LSU Tigers, LSU to me, maybe the biggest mystery team at this point in the season, Blake, the Florida state game was winnable. LSU kind of coughed that up. We've, we've had, the quarterback injury to Jaden Daniels, I still think as we do this on Monday morning, we don't know how that goes. The defense has been great lately. Uh, the opposition has been sketchy lately. Hard to really know what to make of LSU, but it feels like eight is the right spot for now, given all that. Yeah, and I think, again, this this weekend will tell us a lot about LSU because – you know, it's a it's a game that I think they should win um, against Auburn, and of course, you can check out our preview we've already done on that. But I think this is this is one of those where look, if Daniels doesn't play, the injury situation, which again we're recording this on Monday morning, we don't know specifically, you know, what that looks like yet. But I think it's if they go in and win that game against Auburn, then okay, you're like, all right, LSU is setting itself at least above, you know, kind of that tier of teams to where you should go in and, and win that game based on what we've seen thus far and the struggles that Auburn has had. Um, so I think that's what you want to see from LSU, and that will determine whether, okay, they kind of stay in this range, start to move up, or, you know, do they kind of start to move back and they're just kind of that inconsistent team maybe that happened that we see sometimes throughout the season. I think this weekend will give us a great idea of that. Okay, before we get to the top half of our power rankings – we give a shout out to our sponsor, Stakes. That is S T A K E S. There are a lot of big games coming up in the league this week, as there will be every week of the regular season to follow. We will be dropping predictions in the Stakes app sometime Monday, maybe Tuesday, but probably Monday. We want to see if you guys agree or disagree with our picks. Our handle there is Southeastern 14. So go to playwithstakes.com forward slash 14 again that's spelled s-t-a-k-e-s sign up for stakes put your predictions on the games we put in there if you use the invite code southeastern 14 when you sign up you'll get a double welcome bonus is there a cost for any of this ever no there is not can you win stuff even though you're paying nothing yes you can can you have a lot of fun in the app yes can you brag when you beat us with your picks yes no reason for you not to be in stakes today. Sign up, have some fun there with us, and you'll be glad that you did. Okay, leading off the bottom of the top half of the power rankings, checking in at seven, the Arkansas Razorbacks, who we had at seven a week ago. I think you could argue Arkansas is better than the seven slot, but lost to AM and other teams won. 
that's what happens as early in the year. I think the Razorbacks have a chance to climb back up, but my goodness, that schedule is getting brutal. I'm surprised when you said that I had to, I had to like think about what you just said. That when you said that they were at seven, I expected them to still be higher. I had them higher on my list. Um, but yeah, I, I guess it's, I know which team's going to move ahead of them now, but I, I was kind of surprised from our, our staff rankings here that others would have moved um, them down to this point. But again, it, you know, if you're talking about anytime you lose a game and how narrow that is in the SEC and um, you know, you're going to have kind of that ping pong style when it comes to ranking. So uh, yeah, I mean, look, uh, Arkansas had every opportunity to win the game against A&M. Um, you know, they just, they gave away some, some big chances. And as I said before, A&M just made the plays. And so I, I think clearly Arkansas secondary, that's what you want to see the improvement in. And you just have to limit your mistakes overall. If they can do those two things, um, they're going to, they're going to be fine. But, you know, we say that and you got Alabama next. And so Alabama's a team that can exploit some of those, those things as well. So we will find out um, how the, the hogs kind of bounce back there against the tide. Okay. Now we get to the tier of A&M and the unbeatens. Next, we come to Ole Miss at six, the team that really has not played much of anybody, had more trouble with Tulsa than it should have given Tulsa's situation at quarterback. The Rebels still, though, unbeaten. The defense has been pretty good, although it was not very good on Saturday. Maybe you can say Ole Miss had a look-ahead game to Kentucky. However you look at it, Ole Miss is six in our poll. I would still have Ole Miss behind Arkansas at this point because even with the loss for Arkansas, I think it's what we've seen scheduling wise. And I just, I think for me, like I will feel more comfortable moving Ole Miss up if they beat Kentucky. I think to this point, again, we've seen what they've done with their schedule. They've beaten who's on their schedule. You can't do anything more than that. But I think I'll feel a little bit better about maybe, you know, or not maybe it it probably will happen uh, unless Arkansas beats Alabama. Um, moving on this ahead in my individual rankings, just because, again, I, this is like we talked about a And M, how this was a prove it game for them against Arkansas. I think for Ole Miss, this is a prove it game against Kentucky. So, um, yeah, a lot at stake on this one. And look, Rebels win this game, and as we said, Chris, the way that as we said before the season even started, we said the way that schedule sets up, it's a nice spot for Ole Miss, and if they can win this one, they are they are sitting pretty. So. Okay, number five, the Texas A&M Aggies. Um, we have not bought into a lot of what A&M has done because of the offense, but you know what? A&M got two quality wins in a row. It got one on a neutral field. It made the plays when it had to. The defense uh, is really stout. And so the Aggies land at five this week. Yeah, I mean, no choice but to move them up. And like I mentioned, I mean, you you can't not move them up when they beat <laughs> – Pete Arkansas, who was previously number three in our power rankings. So I'm I'm not surprised looking at our our individual rankings here that a lot of people did, you know, moved A and up A and M up quite a bit. So yeah, I think it's look like you said, I mean it's two big wins, two top fifteen wins in a row, and everybody can say what they want about Miami, but at the time they're a top fifteen team and now you've got two of those back to back and you got a big challenge, I think, going to Mississippi State this week. And you know, you lose one of your best players. Um, you know, a big playmaker and a nice Smith. And, and, you know, I think that's, that's what we see now with A&M is coming off a huge win. How do you bounce back? You go on the road to play Mississippi state, a team that had you, you know, had you last year. Um, can you kind of put everything back together and be able to, to keep this thing rolling? I think they absolutely can. I expect it to be a good game. So um, yeah, A&M moving back on up here. Okay. Now we get to the territory where we have maybe what's been the hottest topic of our conversations this year, or barring the, maybe the one that, that comes right after that. Who's better, Kentucky or Tennessee? We did a whole video on that a couple weeks ago. Got yelled at by some people. That, that will settle itself on the field by the end of the season, I would think. For now, though, we have Kentucky 4, Tennessee 3. Both got wins this weekend. Tennessee snapped that. Florida curse uh, and is riding high. Uh, Kentucky obviously has got the better defense, uh, but I think Tennessee's offense has got a couple notches that Kentucky's has not shown so far, and I think that was the differentiator in our voting between these two teams. Yeah, and I think it's also where the team started. Um, 
you know, like I said, I, I've had Tennessee ahead of Kentucky since we started. There's really been no reason to, to change that um, for me, just from how I put my rankings in. And so, yeah, I think that's what it comes down to is I, I don't think there's much that separates these two teams at this point. And we've seen that just with, I think, the the play on the field. Now, you know, you come into a week where if Kentucky goes on the road, beats Ole Miss, then you're really, I think, again, for me, especially, like I'm having to really think, okay, now I think – what else, what else do I do to, to hold Kentucky below, you know, this, this top maybe three spot, do I move them ahead of Tennessee? But as you said, that's going to want to be one of those things that plays out on the field. And I think, again, these two teams are deserving of these two spots in whatever order you want to put them in. Um, I think it's clear now, like they, they have kind of emerged into these two spots and, and yeah, I mean, it's both are going to have some big games the next several weeks, really moving forward the rest of the season. Um, and Kentucky's got a big test against Ole Miss on the road. If they, if they ace that one, then, you know, you're not moving Kentucky down anytime soon and they're going to stay here and keep moving up, uh, just based off of that. And again, with Tennessee coming off a huge win against Florida, um, yeah, it just, it sets up pretty well for both teams. Yeah, that game is going to be October 29th, but in the meantime, we'll have several rankings. It'll be very interesting to see what we do with these two teams. If Kentucky goes in and gets a win this weekend in Oxford uh, right. with Tennessee yeah. being off. Uh, th- that's one of those that I guess if it's decisive, moving Kentucky to three would be probably appropriate if it's if it's a one- or two-point win. I think you could also justify leaving it as is. But we're talking a lot of ifs for a game that's not been played yet. But that's that's the fun of this. And that's the, good the fun news of is, the season. If you're a Kentucky or Tennessee fan, we don't run the college football playoff. So – um, right. <laughs> you don't have to, you don't have to worry about us leaving you out because we're not in charge of that. We're just doing rankings for fun. So it's all good either way. Yeah. One fan base is going to yell at us either way. We love you which both. We're, which we're fine with. Okay. Now we get to the top Alabama two, Georgia at one. I think I would argue that we got that in reverse order, but it's close. And you know, Georgia, that win against Oregon, getting a little louder every week. Um, It's probably fair to say you shouldn't judge Georgia by somewhat underwhelming performances against Sanford and and certainly against Kent State. I think maybe when you're a powerhouse playing a team that you're going to beat easily, uh, maybe you you throw that out. But you've only got so many games to analyze – I've liked Alabama's last two weeks better than I have Georgia's. I thought it was close, but the poll stays with the Bulldogs at number one and Alabama at number two. And again, I, I think this should be decided in December either way, and then maybe again in January. But uh, that's where we are with the SEC, the the two teams that started at the top, although we had Alabama one and Georgia two to start the year, are here now in reverse order. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't have much incentive to move these two to flip them because I, I know you know everyone talked about Georgia Kent State. It was a seventeen point win. Um, you're doing something right if you win by seventeen and you're still you know you've dominated everybody else in your path to that point. And I think for Alabama, I don't know how much I take away from them just decimating Vanderbilt because again Vanderbilt's a, a bottom couple team in our our power ranking. So I don't I don't know exactly what I take away from that, but. You know, big week for for both teams. George is going to maybe get a little angry, go on the road against Missouri team that wants to bounce back. Uh, I think good luck with that. Alabama goes on the road against Arkansas. Much bigger test, I think, for them. So, yeah, it could be interesting to see if if either of those teams, obviously more likely Alabama, um, get challenged and and maybe we have to rethink where they're at heading into our next week's power rankings. Okay, thank you for watching. We are previewing every football game involving SEC teams every week this year. We've done them all so far. We will do all of them to come. We have our picks up at our channel on several games already, and we'll be rolling out the others later today. Best way to not miss that and to not miss any of our stuff is to hit that subscribe button. We will have a live show on Wednesday night. That's listener participation. We answer your questions, address your comments. And later in the week, we'll have our 1 to 131 power rankings. We do a composite of 10 sources, and we just see what that spits out. That's been pretty interesting, too. And I'm sure that will have a different order 
of SEC teams than we came up with here. Again, that's not our ranking, but it is surveying other sources and seeing what that comes with. Okay, for Blake Lovell, I'm Chris Lee. Thanks for watching. God bless you all, and we'll see you soon.